Now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be ever pleasing to you, O God. Amen. Well, when I was when I was very little, actually probably going even into my uh, middle school years, I used to sit in the pew, and as texts were being read, I would daydream and imagine what was going on in these texts. So imagine little old me hearing this week's gospel text and daydreaming about what that would look like. Images would run through my mind. I would think about the disciples and what are they doing? What do they look like? What are they acting like? How are they even standing? And I would start daydreaming during the sermon, which none of you are allowed to do. And I would start creating little storylines in my head about what it would be like to actually be standing in front of Jesus, or how easy it would be to believe and to follow when you could see this person doing all of these things right there before you, watching the miracles firsthand, listening to him pray. I kept thinking it would be so easy to solve all the world's problems if Jesus was just right here before us. Wouldn't it be nice if the Messiah just stood among us? If only we had Jesus physically in front of us, we could all do so much better. Well, it seems that even being a disciple and standing right there in front of Jesus, it's still kind of hard to be the perfect disciple. I thought of the disciples when I was younger as these really wise people. They must be the best of the best for Jesus to have chosen them. They had to have been these really smart people, very self-aware, very holy people for Jesus to have chosen them to follow him. But now as an adult reading the Bible for myself, I can see now that the disciples are not perfect. They're actually just this ragtag team of ordinary people walking around who just happened to be there when Jesus said, Come follow me. They're not the prettiest of the bunch. They're not the smartest of the bunch. They're just your normal old people. I think it's important for us to remember two things about our disciples, especially when we hear texts like today when it sounds like they are getting everything wrong. First, they are made up of everyday people. They are laborers. They are day workers. They're tax collectors. They're sinners. They're not at all the religious elite. They're not the most learned people. They're just everyday people. Second, they are learning for the very first time who Jesus is. And many times, they get it wrong. And that seems okay to Jesus. He still continues to lead them. The disciples are this ragtag group of accidental saints, no different than you and me. But what makes them unique is that when they are faced with sharing the good news, the gospel, and inviting others in, no matter what resistance comes towards them, they continue to share the message. That's the important thing about being this disciple, sharing the message, inviting people to see. Along the way, of course, they get things wrong. They say the wrong things. They look silly almost all of the time, but they continue to move forward. They continue to bring people in. Especially this week as the disciples, this disciple named John has a question that seems to very much miss the mark. So much that it elicits annoyance in Jesus. It seems that Jesus is so angry at them that he's telling them he's going to cut off their limbs and pluck out their eyes. Jesus is pretty annoyed, but he still loves them. He's going to continue to lead them. 
This is only the ninth chapter of a book where they will continue to stay and to tell the story. In the end, despite maybe fear and trepidation and misunderstanding, they still share the good news after Jesus' death and resurrection. Despite feeling out of place and unworthy, they still are called to be God's disciples. I think this is very interesting looking back then. When we try to define what it means to be a disciple, if you look at these ones, it means to be confused. It means to not know all the answers. It means to ask really silly questions sometimes. Who are the ragtag disciples in your life? Who invited you to this church? Who are the people that show you faith? Who are those accidental saints leading you towards God? The people who don't look like or maybe even act like they are the chosen disciples, but when you look at them, they are disciples. I can think of a few of these kinds of people in my life. The first one is my grandfather. He was a goofy, uncoordinated man who always took time to play ball with me in the backyard or teach me how to fish. He always took us off to an old field near his house, and he would toss us a wiffle ball, many times missing to where it's supposed to go. He was one of my favorite people. He used to always go next door to his neighbor's house and clean up her garden. Even though he was in his 80s and she was in her 90s, he was the young one. He showed me how to love and to care for people. The next person I think of is a woman who was very important in my life when I was a youth at church. Her name was Miss Pat. She was not married. She had no kids of her own. And some people in the church thought she was a little eccentric, kind of weird, the crazy hat lady. She didn't fit into any of the social standards at the time. But what she did do was entertain and love us kids. She was loud. She was entertaining. She was always happy around us and telling us stories. She always made us feel welcomed to be loud and crazy in worship. She made us kids feel worthy and appreciated. Every single year, her big thing was to volunteer to drive the big, huge white van down to camp. And it was an honor to get to finally be in Miss Pat's van. It meant that you have graduated into being one of the older kids, that you were cool enough to get to sit in Miss Pat's van and hear her stories. Usually only the older kids got to ride with her in her, in her van, making us younger kids wait our turn until we graduated into this honor. We would sing songs along with her. We would hold conversations with her. And we would listen to her responses to our teenage stresses. She never dismissed our, our problems as juvenile. What was going on in school? What subjects were we studying? I think I am having trouble with this or that. She listened to all of it. She showed us the love of God by caring about us enough to volunteer yearly to take a group of teenagers down to a camp and spend the whole week with us. I used to think that was a simple thing to do, but that's a big responsibility. She showed us the love of God by holding conversations with us and truly listening to every word we had to say and encouraging us. I can think of other accidental saints that are now part of my life today. One that just got a big award, Kate Hubbard. Did you know that Kate Hubbard just received the Volunteer of the Year Award? Out of all of these other large corporations who volunteer for sweet treats, who can bring hundreds of different people from their businesses, Kate Hubbard wrapped the majority or the largest amount of diapers this year. 
we are a ragtag group of disciples. We are gathering what we can and who we can and going and helping when needed. We're not, we're not some big, huge, large corporation that has money everywhere and people abounding. But what we have is the love of God in this community that connects us. There's also the people that went to God's work, our hands, this last week. I forget how many meals we packed, but it was in the 81,000. It was really just about 10 of us. And then a bunch of other people from different churches and Girl Scout groups and soccer teams. But all together, we packed 81,000 meals to be shipped. And then there's those people that go every week or every month to Takoon Farm. And they clean up things and they fix things and they chop things. And they put together meals to then be sent out all throughout the month. And then there's the group of people that's always feeding and organizing for Feed Your Neighbor. They're always making sure there's enough food, praying that there's enough meatloaf and chili, but they're always there. You are all accidental saints, or maybe you knew you were a saint and you saw an accident. But you have all been given this honor through God to say, you are a saint. That you have the ability to go out and to care and to love people. So what does it mean to be a disciple, O oh, saints? That you're going to get some things wrong. You're going to ask some silly questions. But the big important thing is that you love and you invite. You may think that it's hard to bring people into a church or into Christianity by just sitting here in this pew. But it's hard to invite people. But I can tell you a story after a story of why or how I got to different places in my life by somebody just simply saying, Hey, Allie, will you come to chapel with me? Hey, Allie, I think you'd like to learn how to sew or knit. And just simply sitting with somebody. A simple invitation can mean so much. You have no idea what's going on in each other's lives. And just simply inviting each other to come into community, to share time, it can be one of the deepest connections that you offer up to somebody. You don't need to have the perfect words lined up or to look the best when you give this invitation. All you have to do is to know and to be genuine that you want them to be there. You never know if somebody would like to come to church or maybe they want to come to the potluck or to the game night or church choir. They just need that invitation. That's what it means to be a community. It's not that you yourself come to something, but it's that you bring somebody who needs love with you. It's that you're con continuing to connect others in. This is what it means to be the salt of the earth. To continue to share and to spread that love around. God desires that you, not some perfect image of you or somebody who you'll think you'll be in 10 years, but you right now. God desires that the you right now is known. That God knows you exactly who you are. Wherever you are, whoever you are, whatever part of your life journey you're on, that the good news is that God loves you in this exact moment. What kind of good news is that to share with others? It is the greatest news. Bring others into this same understanding that God loves you. So brothers and sisters in Christ, God desires that we, as this ragtag team of accidental saints and disciples, that we come together as a community to support one another, to share our faith, to ask silly questions, to sometimes get it wrong, but to continue to connect 
and to love one another. Amen.